Hi guys, today I'll show you how to make a classic American apple pie. I'll put all the ingredients and measurements in a link below the video. Nicely laid out and easy to print from my website. There are two parts to this recipe, the crust and the filling. This is my all butter pie dough. You'll need two discs of dough. I usually make the dough ahead of time and refrigerate it for a few days or freeze it for a few months. Pull this dough out of the freezer and thaw it. It's a time saver to have dough in the freezer so you don't have to prepare the filling and crust the same day. To make the dough, I put all-purpose flour, salt, and sugar in my food processor. Mixed it on low speed, added cold cubed butter, and pulsed a few times until the mixture looks like coarse crumbs. Pour in a little vinegar and ice cold water. Pulse until the dough just comes together. You don't have to wait for it to form a ball because it'll be over mixed by that point. When you press the mixture, it should come together easily. Divide the dough in two, shape into discs, and wrap well. You can see the pieces of butter throughout. That'll make a flaky dough. Chill the dough for at least one hour before using. It is apple season and there are plenty of varieties available now. Some that I haven't tried before, like this sweet tango, crunchy and sweet. You can use different apples in this pie or just one favorite variety like the Granny Smith. These are Jonah Golds and Honey Crisp. I always taste the apples first so I can figure out how much sugar to put in the pie. Galas and Fujis are other good varieties for pie. Get a big bowl and squeeze a little lemon juice into it. We'll put the cut apples in here and toss it around so they don't turn brown. Wash the apples and peel them. This Y peeler makes the job go much faster. It's one of my favorite tools in the kitchen. We're using a little over three pounds or 1.4 kilograms of apples. When you take the cores out, it'll be just about three pounds, eight to nine medium apples. Slice the apples less than a quarter inch thick. Basically cut half an apple into six pieces. Put them in the bowl with the lemon juice. To thicken the pie, we'll be using cornstarch and cold water. Mix this up well. We'll be cooking the apples for just a few minutes to give them a head start. Otherwise, when you bake the pie, the crust will be golden brown, but the apples may not have cooked completely. And you may end up with a burnt crust if you continue to cook the pie. Heat up a large pan, add the apples, butter, sugar, quarter teaspoon salt, ground cinnamon, and a few pinches of grated nutmeg. It's best to keep the spices simple for this classic pie. Cook for about four minutes. See the liquid on the bottom of the pan? Now add the cornstarch slurry. Add about three quarters of a cup of water and bring this to a boil. Once it boils, cook for just one minute. Turn the heat off and put it aside to cool completely. I used three quarters of a cup of sugar for this pie since my apples are sweet and tart. If you're using just one variety like Granny Smith's, taste the cooked mixture and add more sugar if you need to. The sauce will thicken as it sits. Separate one egg. We'll be using only the egg white to brush the dough. Heat your oven to 425 degrees Fahrenheit or 218 degrees Celsius. Take the dough out of the fridge and leave it on the counter until it's soft enough to roll out. Sprinkle flour on your counter, put the dough down and sprinkle flour on top. You can also rub flour on your rolling pin. Roll the dough, turn it a quarter turn, roll again and keep going. If the sides crack, push them back together. The important thing is to make sure the dough does not stick to the counter. Keep sprinkling flour when you need to. Keep moving the dough to make sure it is not sticking. You can also lift the dough and sprinkle flour underneath. When you're finished, the dough should be about an inch larger than the pie pan. Roll the dough around the rolling pin.
and gently put into the pie plate. Tuck the dough into the pan. Lift and push in lightly. Trim the excess dough. Leave a half an inch. Beat the egg white and brush it all over the bottom crust. This is a tip to keep the bottom crust from getting soggy. Put the pan in the refrigerator while we roll out the second disc. You can roll out the scraps and cut out leaves or any shape you want to decorate the top of the pie. Roll the second disc. I'll fold it and leave it to the side. Get a sheet tray and put the pie plate on it. The tray will catch any bubbling juices from the pan. You don't want the juices dripping into your oven and causing a huge mess. Spoon the cooled filling into the pan. Even it out as you go. This prevents gaps in the pie when you cut into it. If you dump all the filling in at once, it won't look so pretty. I'm using a glass pie pan that's nine and a half inches and the filling is right up to the top and even. You can definitely use a nine inch pan, that's what most people probably have in their home, and you'll have a little mound in the center, which also looks pretty. Either size will work with this recipe. Put the dough on top, trim the excess, take the bottom crust and roll it over the top, pinching it lightly. Use your first two fingers and thumb to crimp the edges. It's very easy and simple, but a classic crust for any pie. Cut four slits in the center of the pie. Brush all over with the beaten egg white. Sprinkle sugar on top. You can use regular white sugar or turbinado sugar, which is coarse and sparkles on top of the crust. Place the sheet tray in the middle of the heated oven for 20 minutes. After 20 minutes, turn the temperature down to 375 degrees Fahrenheit or 190 degrees Celsius and cook for 30 to 40 minutes. The pie is done when you can see juices bubbling through the vent and sometimes spills out of the pan. The crust will be golden brown like this. The edges are not burnt because we turned the heat down after 20 minutes. Cool the pie completely before cutting into it. Unfortunately, you will have to wait many hours. But if you cut it before it's completely cool, you'll have a pool of juices and the pie won't come out in one piece like this. The apples sit neatly on top of each other and there are no large gaps because we didn't dump all the pie filling into the crust at once. The pieces are cooked and soft but not mushy. They have some texture. The crust is buttery and flaky. Your whole house will smell like apple pie. One of my favorite smells in the fall. Let me know how you like this recipe and subscribe for more videos. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.